Hey y'all, how's it going? It's Mike with the Ongoing Restoration. Hope you're doing well. In this video today, I want to talk about masculinity. The world uh, has coined that uh, term uh, with uh, another word, uh, phrasing it as toxic masculinity. And that seems to be the, uh, the focus point uh, for the world. Uh, but the gospel has a different perspective on masculinity, a masculinity that's wholesome. And uh, there's so many examples throughout history of wholesome masculinity. Um, but I like um, most especially the examples that are in the scriptures of masculinity. In the Book of Mormon, there's so many. Uh, Nephi, Lehi. Um, you know, even the stubborn ones, they're, they're really good examples, uh, Laman and Lemuel. But uh, the ultimate example, of, of course, uh, as well, you got Captain Moroni. Uh, he's one of my favorite examples of wholesome masculinity. But um, uh, the ultimate example uh, is uh, our Savior Jesus Christ. Um, there's, a, there's a book that I'm reading. Um, I'm not, I'm not really uh, on that one right now. I'm, I'm finishing up another one. But uh, I, I have in my possession a book called uh, The Man of Steel and Velvet. I can't remember who the author is. But uh, it, it, and it's an old book. It probably needs to be uh, revised and updated. I think it's like from the 70s or 80s. Uh, but it's, you know, uh, it's amazing to see the, the tenderness, the vulnerability, and yet the power and the strength that the Savior had um, while he was on this earth. And, um, you know, like I said, he's the ultimate example. But um, uh, in a book that I'm currently reading, it uh, is called Wild at Heart, um, Discovering the Secret of a Man's Soul. Um, if you are not familiar with this book, I would encourage you to purchase it. You can get it on Amazon. It's a wonderful read. Um, I hate reading, but I love learning. So trying to mix the two, that... Uh, it's an interesting combination there for somebody like myself. Um, but again, you know, it's a wonderful book. And, and the author, John Eldridge, um, he talks about um, uh, another example of masculinity that probably gets overlooked by a lot of people, uh, especially as Christians. Um, but he... Um, focuses on the example of uh, Joseph and his uh, uh, heroic um, attributes and, and character. Um, and uh, he, he really had some interesting thoughts about uh, the man Joseph, who, who was Mary's husband and, and Jesus' stepfather or earthly father. Um, but he says... You know, I don't think we've fully appreciated what he did for them. Mary, an engaged woman, almost a girl, turns up pregnant with a pretty wild story. I'm carrying God's child. The situation is scandalous. So what is Joseph to think? What is he to feel? Hurt? Confused? Betrayed? No doubt. Probably even insecure. Um, but he's a good man. And he will not have her stoned. He will simply divorce her quietly. And then an angel comes to him in a dream, which actually shows us uh, what it sometimes takes to get a good man to do the right thing, right? Uh, to convince him that Mary is telling the truth and that he is to follow through with the marriage. This is going to cost him, though. Do you know what he is going to endure? If... He marries a woman that the whole community thinks is an adulteress. Now he's going to be shunned by his business associates and most of his clients. He will certainly lose his standing in society and perhaps even his place in the synagogue. Think about that. If you're a man and you're married, are there any burdens that your wife is having to carry that... Uh, 
will cost you anything um, if you support her uh, in her burdens, which you should as a good and faithful husband. Um, there was a cost uh, to Joseph supporting his wife. You know, he probably uh, lost um, some friendships and he, uh, you know, probably lost some business maybe. Um, they talked about uh, him losing his place in the synagogue. Um, and as I was reading that, um, it got me thinking, you know, are there any burdens that my wife is carrying that may cost me uh, certain connections with uh, certain, I don't know, uh, families or members in, in my ward? Um, it, will it cost me an opportunity to serve in, in any particular calling? Um, you know, I, I, I've served in... Um, my ward as the elders quorum president. I've served in the elders quorum presidency as a as a counselor, and you know we our family was younger then. Um, we didn't have as many kids then, um, but would I be able to serve in that same capacity now? Probably, um, but uh, I I was uh, driven a, a certain way, and and the way my brain is wired, um, I. I probably uh, put a little too much uh, emphasis in my calling than I should have. And, and you know, sometimes, you know, when we're serving in, in certain church callings, uh, you know, it, it, it might be at the expense of our family. And, uh, you know, there's a, a price to pay there, whether that's uh, losing that opportunity to connect with our children, with our spouse, um, you know, and of course we'll receive blessings as we serve in callings but you know there's a cost there so anyways just something to think about um now to get back on track here um uh, the author john eldridge continues to see the pain he's in for notice the insults that crowds will later use against jesus isn't this joseph and mary's son they say with a sneer and a nudge and a wink in other words, we know who you are, the bastard child of that slut and her foolish carpenter. Joseph will pay big time for this move, but does he withhold? No. He offers Mary his strength. He steps right between her and all of that mess and takes it on the chin. He spins himself for her. And then uh, he continues with a scripture from Isaiah, they will be called oaks of righteousness. There, under the shadow of a man's strength, a woman finds rest. The masculine journey takes a man away from the woman so that he might return to her. He goes to find his strength and he returns to offer it. He tears down the walls of the tower that has held her with his words and with his actions. He speaks to her heart's deepest question in a thousand ways. Yes, you are lovely. Yes, there is one who will fight for you. But because most men have not yet fought the battle, most women are still in the tower. That is very deep. It is very thought provoking, and you know, it really uh, got me thinking a lot about, you know, how I can be a better husband to my wife and support her. You know, we're all going through trials and struggles, and and it's important to be uh, self aware. I think I put a video out uh, a while back on self awareness, and. Uh, you know, uh, that's something to think about as well. But if, if we are self-aware, we're going to be able to recognize. And not in like a codependent, preoccupied, you know, stressed out and worried way, but we'll be able to to pick up on, you know, if, if somebody's carrying a burden um, so that we can help support them in it. And especially those within our own family. 
So, um, you know, I, I just love that example uh, from this book on masculinity. And, uh, you know, hope it uh, kind of gives you a, a better idea if, if you're... Um, if you're a guy, if you're married and kind of finding yourself in, in a situation where you're just, you know, trying to self-evaluate and, and just improve, which I think most of us are, you know, with all the conference talks we're getting, especially from President Nelson, you know, I just love his attitude of, you know, continuous improvement, repentance and, and progress. And um, uh, I share that with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.